I will now request uh, the audience. If they have any question, feel free and ask. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Saab. Very motivational and useful talk. <clears throat> I am Dr. Kazi Mahmood Rasam, Department of Mathematics, University of Hawa. Sir, please, oh, uh, if you go to slide number 46. <clears throat> Yes, this is basically the map where we had the dynamic map. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, the areas oh, which looks to be safer one, can you identify these areas in this map uh, where the less probability of having the earthquakes? Actually, one thing is if I just play it again, uh, or if I just move to this, instead of this if i go to this uh, so yeah. it is the same slide but it is a static slide as you can see nothing is constant in earth uh, actually if i say like i uh, i previously mentioned in terms of time because that was a time slide slides this is the same thing just for 10 years uh, so you can see this is the 70s this is 80s 90s then 2000 sir. so throughout this area is more active with earthquakes but again this is one parameter that is telling us that earthquake activity is there but as we had seen in our first uh, analytics where we applied the depth so the earthquakes are there but most of the earthquakes are of deeper range so what we can infer that this area is seismically more active area and even the last earthquake which i think a month before occurred was also occurred within this region it is i think afghanistan or somewhere uh, the other countries in its neighborhood but uh, basically it means earthquakes very frequently keep occurring there but uh, they have higher magnitudes even but since they are deeper so we don't have uh, usually there is not much damage because of those uh, things but as we moved into this era and here we had the earthquakes so it means if i now consider this so from this dynamic map what i can infer that most of the time that for the first three decades 70s 80s and 90s three 30 years this area was stable and then all of a sudden it becomes active so it means the stresses have been so much accumulated that now it was time to that, the, that there should be a movement according to uh, at the fault plane. And so we had large number of earthquakes and a major earthquake occurred. But once that energy was released, so it means now it is silent again. So now looking at the maps, what we would say that this region is always seismically active, but the earthquakes are deeper and even high magnitude earthquakes occur here. This is not so uh, dangerous area in the sense that uh, since the earthquakes occur at a deeper depth range, so it means uh, uh, it is a seismically active region, but the, it is not that much hazardous. Whereas this area, after 30 years, it became active and the earthquakes were of higher magnitude and are of deeper depth. So it means we can infer that this is a more dangerous zone, but it has a cyclicity. Again, if I just say again, this region, this doesn't have any cyclicity. We have a continuous earthquake activity, whereas this region has a cyclicity. We should also remember that, uh, uh, like we have the St. Andreas Fault. Uh, so the Americans, what they do, they keep on pouring mud or uh, lubricants there so that the fault plane is active. So and though there is a movement along the fault. What it means, very small stresses are being accumulated, but because of uh, uh, lubricants, there is no friction, and so these stresses are released uh, uh, frequently. So it means when we are having a number of earthquakes here, so it means stresses are accumulated and they are frequently released. Uh, so it means whenever we have a seismic activity like this, so there is a tendency, we don't have a tendency of uh, having a higher earthquakes. But considering this point here, it means we usually don't have an earthquake activity. So it means the stresses keep on accumulating for a number of years. And then the stresses are now so strong that all of a sudden we have a very high magnitude of earthquake. So 
if I compare these two reasons, so I would say this area is more dangerous as compared to this one. So I hope I answered it. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Uh, sir, uh, only one thing I want to query that uh, you did all about the research, uh, whole presentation. Uh, you take only the data, data science, data structures. While in earthquakes model, there is a behind a strong mathematics also. Mathematical modeling is there. So anyone is uh, working, in, anyone from your team or whatever in your group, Okay, no, uh, let me first of all, I am within the oil and gas company. So actually, uh, we deal with uh, exploration seismology, we don't deal with the earthquake seismology. But since I, on my own, I keep on doing research in different areas of geophysics. So basically, it is not just data analytics, everything is uh, interconnected, like uh, I was calculating that B value. So that B value is basically uh, we are using equations from earthquake seismology to compute those parameters. Similarly, when we have the earthquakes data, we can also model out the peak ground acceleration for the whole area, or for we can divide the area into different zones and we can compute those values. So it means, again, uh, it is a mix of everything. We are computing values within time or space, but we are applying and those values are computed using equations of seismology or uh, but then data analytics are applied by uh, distributing the data in time or in space so that is the role of data analytics any other question i have a question okay I am Dr. Numan Aftab from Psychology Department. Sir, I have a question that you have talked about uh, earthquakes and seismology. So can you tell me that uh, is there any effect of these uh, earthquakes and this seismology on the oil fields or exploration of oil? It doesn't has uh, usually direct link. Uh, mostly it doesn't has any link with those things uh, because uh, uh, in general, if I say, first of all, let me tell you that uh, like we were talking about the depth ranges. So most of the our size, uh, oil reservoirs are uh, within three to five kilometers of depth range. Uh, and uh, they have uh, no effect uh, because of that. But most of the petroleum traps within a time frame of millions of years, they have been developed due to tectonic uh, activities. Suppose if we have a compressional regime, so it means uh, uh, we would be getting fold or anticlinal structures and so hydrocarbons will migrate to that structure. So usually it doesn't has any effect, but it, for any specific case, it may have effect like uh, suppose if we have a reservoir and a large earthquake uh, happened uh, and it was such a large that uh, and it was so close to that reservoir that uh, a fault, new fault was created through the reservoir and because of that fault movement, uh, everything or the reservoir fluids leaked out. So it means that would have an effect on that. Uh, so it means, uh, but uh, that actually in general, it doesn't has any effect on that, uh, uh, but it may depend that any earthquake, which is very close to any field. So it means may, it may damage like the earthquakes, they damage the buildings and all the uh, things. So similarly, if it is close to a reservoir, so maybe there is movement and there's a fracture in the reservoir, so it can damage. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't have any effect on that. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Khalid Main, if there is no any question, we will uh, close the session. And we are thankful to all the participants who spared their precious time to listen to this lecture. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you.